Hello everyone. Happy Palm Sunday to everyone. And welcome to the Union Pacific Railroad Evanston Subdivision. In HO scale. My name is Daryl Cruz, owner and builder of the layout and your host for episode 13 of season 2023. I want to welcome everyone to the channel and to the layout. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet. Like it. That would be awesome. And um, uh, comment if you would like. That would be nice as well. This is an update as of today, April 2nd. And I have some uh, more work at the Kerrville Bridge. Uh, hopefully you got a chance to see the live op session yesterday. If you haven't yet, you might want to check that out. Uh, we had a really cool op session yesterday for about three hours. And Andrew Rose was nice enough to uh, videotape that for me. And I uh, just want to show you now some work that we did on the uh, Curvo area. And... As you know from uh, previous weeks, I've been trying to work on the slopes above the uh, tunnel portals. And I did address the lower t tunnel portal last time. As you can see, it's sloping appropriately. Uh, but this week, I uh, tried to do something with the upper tunnel portal. As you can see, it's pretty much vertical uh, to begin with here. So I wanted to uh, try and match the prototype as best I could. And uh, you can kind of see some before pictures and how things look before I kind of decided what to do. Now, I wanted to make sure that I got the slopes on both right, but I wanted to kind of make sure it blended in. This was a little bit more difficult to make sure it all uh, blended in with everything. So I cut a pretty big hole out, and I kept some of the cardboard underneath. I just cut the plaster and it separated from the cardboard. The paper stuck to the plaster gauze, but the cardboard stayed in there. And then I added some additional strips. You can see I'm kind of sloping it now instead of the vertical. I also, to kind of make sure everything kind of fit together, I pushed down a lot of the remaining plaster gauze around it. So that was a pretty good transition. So this is definitely a big improvement uh, from what it was. Now I'm going to be putting in a layer of plaster over this. And it's going to be a pretty thin layer. But there's going to be some places where there's some like bumps and so forth. Like right above the tunnel portal there. I kind of fill that in with plaster to smooth that out. So it definitely is going to be uh, a lot smoother than that. Although the ground is kind of rough to begin with, so I'm not going to be too worried about it. But if it's too pronounced, I am going to smooth it out with some plaster. So uh, it looks more like uh, the uh, the area around it. So here's what it looks like right now. And I also began work on the uh, girder support in the middle of the bridge. Now one thing, the Central Valley... Our girders did not have rivet detail on the end here. And here you can see the prototype, and there is rivet. So the uh, kit had some uh, box girder, some box uh, uh, girders without the girders. It just had solid sides all around, and it had the rivets, whereas the girders did not have the rivets on the ends. And so I kind of sliced a piece off of one and glued it onto the girders because I wanted to make sure I had the uh, the rivet detail on there like the prototype. Uh, but anyway, the Central Valley uh, girder kits are, are really nice, work out pretty good. And as you can see, I, I there is a bit of an issue with uh, clearance. And uh, the, I knew this was kind of was a possibility of being a, a, a concern. And as you can see, I just kind of, I wasn't sure how to attach it to the to the bridge. And so I just used some I-beams. And it only took a couple on this side. Um, we didn't have near the clearance problems on this side as, it, as uh, I did on the other side. Uh, so the couple of girders uh, 
to attach it to their bridge worked out pretty good on this side. On the other side, not so much. All right, so I wasn't too happy. That looks pretty good there, but I was trying to extend it out further so I have multiple girders there, and it just looks stupid. That th does not look right. So I'm not happy with that. And then even with the additional ones, it still was hitting. There it did not have clearance. Here this inner mountain auto rack hits it, and the double stack also hits it. And up. Uh, so it's uh, more of a clearance issue on this side that you're looking at. This side, not too bad. The auto racks don't hit it at all. Um, so there, but you do have clearance on the other side, as you can see. So I'm going to have to extend the outside girder even more. Now here you can see it does hit on the inside a little bit. but see, it rubs right there. So I'm going to have to pull it out just a little bit on uh, on the on this side, on the inside. You notice I kind of bumped the bridge. So on the visible side, it's still going to have to come out a little bit, which I should be a problem. I think it'll still look right, but on the back side, it's going to have to come out a lot. So on the back side, it's going to have to come out more than what it is on the prototype. But I'm not too worried about it because it's not really visible. As I adjusted, it's not at, really not actually hitting. So I want it to come out very far. Um, I wanted to have some clearance more than just inches. And on this side, it bang. It's like that's got to definitely come out quite a bit. So I'm going to, um, it's going to be necessary uh, to uh, come up with a different method of attaching the girders. Now here, I get, here's a close-up of how I attach it. I was not too impressed with myself on this. It looks pretty good on this side, especially when it's painted black. I think it would be fine. I just had a hard time seeing from the pictures exactly how they were attached. Um, so that was uh, not too bad, but I, you know, it's got to come out even further. I can't keep using the beams and keep extending it. It just looks like a hodgepodge. So um, that's definitely, definitely not going to work at all. Uh, so here's some pictures. The problem I was having is that every picture the, where you can try and see where it attaches, it's in the shadows. There's just really not a real clear picture of what's going on um, between the... Uh, until I came across this picture, I kept looking for pictures, and I finally came to this picture uh, which um, after looking at it for a while it's obvious that it's basically it's attached via a girder that goes across now at first I was thinking of it just went from the bridge out but it, as you can see there's the girders on both sides of the bridge so it's just one piece which makes sense from a structural standpoint kind of made me relook at this one here you can see again so I think there's just another girder that goes across the bridge and supports both sides. Okay, so you can kind of see the girder that goes all the way across. So finally, I had some pictures where I could actually figure out exactly what was going on. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all the the uh, I beams out of there. I'm going to remove everything and cast. Kind of I'm going to keep the the uh, the girder, the the box girders, but I'm going to use this additional girder here. I had a an, a an additional bridge, so it's just going to be. It's going to go all the way across, and I'm going to then uh, cut it at the right angle, the correct angle, and attach it on both sides. And the, the Girder is going to have to be a little bit further out on the outside so that there's clearance. So that's not going to be prototypical when it goes out that far. It's going to go out further than it does on a prototype. Uh, but it won't be visible uh, too much, and I think it's going to work out pretty good. So uh, first try looks uh, not too bad, but doesn't really work because it's hitting. Um, but uh, wait till next week when we have uh, the second attempt. I think it's going to be 
uh, looking pretty good. Uh, so I was really happy that I was able to see a clear picture of what was going on with the attachment of the girders to the bridge. Uh, so here's the approach to Curvo through the Castle Rock area. It comes through a bridge here. I've been thinking a lot about how I'm going to paint everything too. I don't really like the way that's painted rust there. I'm going to need to add some texture to that. I've been thinking about how to add texture to that. Um, because there's definitely a lot of red dirt and red rocks around this uh, these tunnel portals. Um, as you can see, here's the picture of the prototype and then Here's the model. So uh, definitely going to have to put in a lot of red dirt. and Going to try and use some uh, texture paint. Maybe add some sand to some paint. So it's not just painted plaster. It has some texture and then put some vegetation on it. And hopefully it will look awesome. Now this train here does not have any problem with any clearance. That auto rack there is an atlas. The Intermountain Auto Racks, by the way, I do not recommend them. They had this great idea to make it have the doors open, but it that doesn't really work. And then it makes it look unprototypical with uh, the guides for the doors. But this is definitely shaping up slowly. Been spending a lot of times, a lot of time on this area. Again, here you can see the difference between the model and the prototype. I think it's gonna gonna be a definitely a signature piece of the layout. The operating session that we had yesterday a lot of people were happy to see you know some additional scenery on. It's been six weeks since the last one. So uh, all this uh, white plaster area was completely new although it's kind of funny they all kind of know what's coming up because they watch the videos and and know uh, where things stand uh, but it's always definitely good to see it in person as we see uh, trains going across the bridge so coming up this week I'm going to get that um, mid girder completed and I'm also going to get the piers built for that. So next week you should be able to see the bridge pretty much completed. Now I'm not going to glue it in yet though because I have to do the scenery around it and everything. But I'm going to have the bridge completed and then I'm going to hopefully have uh, some plaster, a layer of plaster on that whole area at Curvo. And then we'll be able to start putting on some color. Uh, so something to look forward to. Definitely want to uh, look forward to having some color on the layout, but really appreciate everybody watching and uh, following the channel. Take care, everybody. Have a great week.